Oh, hello, you dirty potters. How are you, person who is in trouble right now? So I notice that on one of my last glaze reviews for C-10, a glaze that Amico makes from the Celadon line, a lot of you were interested to see how this glaze mixes with other glazes. Most of you don't care about the glaze itself. As I said in the previous video, it literally just makes the color white. And then it literally, on brown clay, just makes the color white. And in order to keep my glaze reviews pure, there's two things that I don't do. I try not to mix it with too many other glazes, and I don't put water inside of the glaze itself until I'm done reviewing the glaze. Usually what I do is I get a bottle because there's so much CMC gum in it, which is a glaze thickener, helps it stay in suspension as well. A lot of glaze companies do this, but I know that putting water in it kind of dilutes that and stretches the glaze a little bit without changing it too much. So in that video, I essentially just reviewed the glaze itself. But one of you, oh, oh, one of you, left a comment. Oh yeah, you left this comment right here. First of all, how dare you insinuate that I don't love at least 5.3% of you? Which 5.3%? That's none of your business. If I told you, you would immediately get discouraged. Oh, and I love you. I love you so much that we're gonna do a second episode of this glaze. Except for the entire episode is gonna only be combinations. That's how much I love you. Okay, if you question it again, I swear I'll come to So today, we're gonna be mixing C-10 Snow from the Amico line with Cosmic Tea Dust, also from the Amico line. We're also gonna be mixing it with River Rock. I've done this before and I loved this combination. I wanna see what else I can do with this. This C-10 glaze seems to be a little bit like my own personal Lumos glaze, which mixes really well with a lot of other glazes, but it like by itself, it's essentially just white. It's barely a Celadon. We're also going to be mixing it with Randy's Red, which is my own glaze. I know that most of you don't know how to make your own glazes. You just buy bottled glazes. But this is one of the homemade glazes that I have in my repertoire, as it were. And I also, because of this comment right here, am going to mix it with my own personal glaze, Lao Guy Green. Let this be a lesson to the rest of you that if you ever question me again, you get more content. Now that I'm thinking about it, the tone has been exactly the opposite of what you're getting. You're getting positive things and I'm making it sound negative. I'm overthinking it. We're just going to do the episode.
Okay, so firstly, please forgive me because the lighting is a little bit weird right now. I'm recording at like 1 a.m. and I'm trying to be a little more quiet because when I was recording before, I had to go to a doctor's appointment because, you know, I am a human and sometimes I have to do that. So I've essentially been glazing in the dead of night, but I got it all done and I also got it in the midst of me glazing a bunch of other stuff as well for the new store update coming soon. So let's just go over real quick what we're about to put inside the kiln. All of these plates are C-10 based. These two up here are River Rock, these two here are Randy's Red, and these two are Lao Gai Green. This is my own recipe. This is a recipe that's been handed down to potters for generations, but I know how to make it. With that being said, I'm gonna put all of these in the kiln and fire it off right now. So I will see you in about two and a half or three days maybe, but in your time, it's gonna be like five seconds and a cute picture of a little doggy. Okay, it's a couple days later now and I hate this. Let's take it the Lao Gai Green and C-10 plates first. It seems to me that the Lao Gai Green is so strong that it completely muted the C-10. And spaces where you can see the C-10 are just gone. They're, they're just like little tiny white specks. You'd think this is dirt or dust or something, but it's not. This is honestly just, you can't scrub it off. You can't get it off or anything. It's literally just the C-10 trying its best to survive underneath the massive power of Lao Gai Green. I'm honestly not really happy with this and it's little brother came out the same exact way. Like these, these are a set and they came out exactly the same. I'm, I am not happy with the mixture of C-10 and Lao Gai Green. Now I wish this is where my disappointment stopped. And my disappointment didn't stop here because I also mixed C-10 from Sell It Online with PC-67 River Rock. And this is what I got out of it. And you saw me glaze the plates themselves. I put a layer of C-10 down first and the white came out great. Came out exactly how it's supposed to. But this is not what I expected from a mixture of PC-67 and C-10. In fact, the last time that I mixed these two glazes, I got this color right here and it looks beautiful. I think somebody bought them from my website immediately, like the day after I put them up on my website. But this is not what I expected or wanted whatsoever. These are essentially just brown plates. Yeah, I actually don't like this combination whatsoever. The only hope I had for this combination is the fact that you can see a little bit of color right there on the edge, and that was a good hope, but I either layered this way too much or not enough because the layers of color don't, don't come in whatsoever. It, it basically only got good right here, and then the rest of it muted. So this is also not cool. Oh, don't worry, kids, because like getting socks at a birthday party, the disappointments don't stop here. I also mix C-10 with a glaze that I've been messing with for quite some time called Lynette's Opal. It's in an old John Britt recipe book and I've, I've loved it. I've been loving it for quite some time. I've been messing with it. Here are some of my results. I put those results on glazy along with the recipe. Everything's up there, I love it. And so I thought, well maybe if I mix a light glaze with like an opal glaze or a light glaze with a light glaze, it'll turn out great. And some of you might be looking at these and being like, wow, that's really nice. Those are really good colors. I like that a lot. Look, I might be a little jaded, because my last kiln load had four mugs that came out like this, and like they're fantastic. And I'm over here like, yeah, these are, these are okay, I guess. These are C-10 mixed in with Lynette's Opal. Lynette's Opal went on the top, and you saw me put the C-10 on the bottom. If you take a closer look, they look good, but they don't look as good as I expected them to with the glaze combination that I gave them. And this combination's a little bit better, I guess, but like, I'll be real with you. If this came out of my kiln, which it did, I wouldn't be like, oh man, these suck. I'd be like, I could probably do better to be real with you. Like I've, I have done and I can probably do better. So I am not excited about C-10 and Lynette's Opal. Let's put those on the failure pile. In fact, everything goes in the failure pile. The only one that I was really excited about was the C-10 
and the Cosmic Tea Dust from Amico, PC-63. Cosmic Tea Dust has been doing me right. It's been doing me, it's been doing me like a, like a song that, uh, like a weekend song. You know, you hear the weekend and you're like, oh, I'm horny all of a sudden, I don't know why. This is what came out of the kiln for C-10 and Cosmic Tea Dust. But, like, I'll be honest with you, this doesn't look like I mixed it with C-10 whatsoever. This just looks like what would happen if you just put Cosmic Tea Dust on a plate, on a stoneware plate. I did not need the C-10 whatsoever. In fact, in the spots in which I can see the C-10, the Celadon White, I, I don't want them there because they're messing up the initial glaze of Cosmic Tea Dust. This has a little bit more of C-10 Snow on it, and this looks way better because, like, it actually looks like Cosmic Tea Dust without the Snow C-10 on it. And, like, I don't, I don't understand how this glaze is messing up literally everything I have. Oh, Dante, I've used the glaze before and it's fantastic. You must be using it wrong. Nope. At this point, no. I know what I'm doing with glaze. I've tested it on five different glazes, four of which I'm doing it specifically for you in this video. This glaze is butt. I feel like this could have gotten by with me very easily if, if Amico was like, it's just an opaque, like it's a glaze that makes things opaque. White opaque. It's just a white opaque glaze. Don't put it in the Celadon line. Don't call it snow. Don't, you know what I mean? Just like, Call it, call it like white out or something. That, that would be much more accurate to the characteristics of this glaze. Cause so far it either messes up my glazes or, or it's just white. Like there's no in between. I'm gonna show you a slow-mo shot of the C-10 in Cosmic Tea Dust, but I'm letting you know now, you could pretty much just pretend like c 10s not on there. Cause this is essentially what Cosmic Tea Dust looks like. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I know that the half of this episode was just me bad-mouthing this C-10 glaze, but I was nice about it the first time. When I did a glaze review video on this, I was like, oh, let's give it a chance. Let's, I've played with it before, but maybe I did it wrong. Let's give it a chance. And then I did a glaze review video, and I was like, it's not that good, guys. And then I got a bunch of you nerds in the comments below who were like, give it another chance, I love it. And now I've given a chance on four different combinations with four different glazes, some of which were made by me and some of which were made by Amico themselves. And it still, it still kind of sucks. I made decisive action to say this glaze is probably not good. And you guys were like, it's the best, try it again. And I tried it again. And then you guys, I was like, it's not that good. And you guys were like, it's the best, try it again. And I tried it again. I just put my foot down. You're grounded now, okay? This is a bad, this is not a good glaze. If you like the color white, it's okay. Just say you like the color white. It's fine. You're allowed to like that. But to say that it's versatile? No. Nope. Clearly not. To say that it's Celadon? Clearly nope. not. To say that it works with a bunch of different glazes and combinations? Clearly nope. not. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I know, like, one eighth of this video is me just going, like, guys, it's not that good. Potters, Potters, it's not that good. If you like this kind of content and you want me to test more glazes out and you want me to do things like this, put it down below in the comments. I always love your comments. I read most of them within the first, like, two days of me releasing a video. Thank you, beautiful commenter, for commenting this. You were the inspiration for this episode. I love you long time. You potters have a great time on your next art projects, and I will see you, dirty potters, next week. Thank you for your patronage. The glaze is just white. It's okay if you like the color white. It's okay if you enjoy the color white and muted white. But as per my last glaze review video, it doesn't have the attributes of Celadon. It's not clear. It's super opaque. And it messes up half my other glazes.